Welcome, everyone, to this week's episode of the Bamboo Lab podcast. As always, I'm your host, Brian Bosley, and for the better part of the past 26 years, I've had the most distinct and honorable, honorable pleasure of coaching the top performers around the world. And here what we do each week is we bring these ideas and their wisdom and their thoughts directly to you. Do you feel like sometimes you're stuck on that hamster wheel in life and you're just spinning? The trajectory, the direction, the pace you're going at is not the pace you choose to go. If so, you have landed in the right spot. The Bamboo Lab podcast is created and broadcast just for you, all you strivers, drivers, and survivors out there. We have a great guest today, everyone. An amazing guest. I've been trying to get her on my podcast for the past few weeks, so we're an honor to have her on here. But before we get started with our honored guest, I want to share with you that this episode is dedicated to all you kiddos out there going back to school over the next three or four weeks, from kindergarten through college. Life is a series of stages and steps. This is merely your next one. Embrace it, lean into it, and make this your year. One heart letter we're going to read today came from an old client of mine out of Covina, California. And all he said was, Brian, these are great. Thank you for sharing. That's all I wanted to hear. All right. Today we have a special guest, Sam Calabart. Sam is a three-time certified breathwork facilitator with over 200 hours of teacher training. And she's the host of the podcast, The Heal Podcast. And I have to share with you folks, I've been on this now, and you have to jump on the Heal podcast. If you're feeling at all that your life needs some tweaking in any direction, physically, emotionally, intellectually, or spiritually, this podcast will bring you right to the place that center of your universe of where you need to be. I really enjoy it. I listened to one this morning that uh, with uh, Kelly, and it was really, really amazing. Her cadence and her her voice just kind of pull you into your inner self and it makes you give yourself some deep, deep spiritual thinking. She's also trained in, in yoga meditation, energy therapy, and nutrition. She creates an experience of transformative healing using spiritual teachings, conscious breath work, somatic integration, meditation, and energy work for her students. She battled uh, chronic health issues for 16 years uh, from stress and burnout. And then she discovered the importance of using an integrative approach to really physical, mental, and emotional healing. And one of her uh, modalities is conscious breath work, which we're going to get into today, hopefully. And it was, it's she, what she said, I really love this part when I was studying her and researching Sam. She said, it's only when we stop giving away our power and release the belief that healing comes from an external source outside of ourselves, that we empower our own journey. She and her husband called Grand Rapids, Michigan, their home. And without further ado, Sam, welcome to the Bamboo Lab podcast. Thank you for having me, Brian. I'm excited to be here. I am very excited to have you. It's funny because uh, we've lived, I lived in East Grand Rapids for 22 years. We never ran into each other. We just somehow got connected on Facebook and I followed her and I really liked some of the stuff she posted and and her style. And then getting on this podcast of hers, I'm going to recommend it again, the Heal podcast. Get on it and check it out. So, Sam, I know a little bit about you just from my research and following you on Facebook, but can you share with the Bamboo Lab who you are? Yes. So my name is Sam Calwart. I am a breathwork teacher, a mentor, I'm a wife, and a new mom to a nine-month-old son named Eastwood. So in the last two years, our lives have been pretty much turned upside down uh, from expecting um, Eastwood, which was a total surprise and moving from downtown Grand Rapids, about 30 minutes East in the country, we built a home and we're here now on four acres. And it was my calling for a really long time to come back to the country because I was raised in the country. So we are now in a beautiful wooded area um, in Lowell, Michigan, and I absolutely love it. And I've also gone through just a huge transition the last couple of years from seeing clients one-on-one in my office in Grand Rapids to moving to primarily group work. And that has been really um, empowering both in my relationship with my son and being able to have that extra free time with him and to show up as the mom that I want to be. And then also to guide these community sessions, which have been so incredibly powerful. 
That's amazing. Well, congratulations on being a new mom to Eastwood. I love that name, by the way. Does Thank it have you. anything to do with Clint Eastwood or no? <laughs> we did um, just kind of a take on Americana. And um, so Eastwood and his middle name is Ford. So it's Eastwood Ford. And we just love really traditional, all American, strong names. So that's why we went with it. <laughs> You're not getting much stronger than that. <laughs> I, uh, my grandson, um, the audience knows this, most of the returning audience, uh, Sam, but my grandson was born a year ago this past month. And his name is Jack Musselman. So I said, <laughs> they've got that kind of Eastwood Ford middle mm. kind of concept to it. I love so, it. Gr- where did you grow up then, Sam? I grew up in Hudsonville. So closer to the lakeshore in the country. And then so growing up with you doing this, this, this amazing mind body work, spiritual work with your with your clients, with yourself and with your loved ones. Who was the inspiration growing up to get to? I know you have a story that ha, that you kind of came to a realization in your twenties, but who inspired you as a as a child? Honestly, growing up, um, I didn't have someone I really looked up to. Um, it was more through books and through podcasts that I found my inspiration. So I believe the first author that I was really inspired by was reading the book, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And I was probably 17, 18 when I read that book. And it introduced me to this idea that we have the ability to co-create our lives. And it was so expansive for me, especially growing up in a very traditional Midwestern home with two parents that worked in a factory for their entire lives. And so this idea of being able to co-create abundance and to co-create prosperity and healing within your life was so new to me and it inspired me so much. And it led me down this path in this rabbit hole of learning how to optimize myself at all levels, mind, body, and spirit. And the reason for it, my why is because at 15, I had contracted Bell's palsy, which is spatial paralysis on the left side of my face. And I had that facial paralysis for nearly six months. And that was very debilitating. It was the only time in my life I remember being depressed because going to the doctors, no one could give me an answer as to why I had Bell's palsy. No one could really give me a treatment that worked. I took the steroids and the antivirals that they gave me, but I saw almost no improvement. And so that was a really um, strenuous time within my life because you're at such an impressionable age at 15. And I was a freshman in high school and I had to drop out of school for a time period. And going back was really traumatizing for me because my face was still paralyzed in order to graduate that year. I had to go back um, by you know the third month or so. And that was absolutely a huge rock bottom for me that from the beginning had me questioning allopathic medicine and if there was another way. And I knew that there was another way, but reading that book, Think and Grow Rich, was the first time I realized, okay, there is something else here. My spiritual background as a Christian really helped me through this journey as well, because I always had a higher sense of faith and trust that there was healing within me and through God, anything was possible. I just needed to find those tools and those resources to get me to that place of healing and of growth. And it was through a decade after I first contracted Bell's palsy, over a decade of me searching for those tools and those resources to continue to heal and optimize and to get to the root of what was really going on in my health. And I found out about a decade later that I had Lyme disease and I had Bell's palsy, not once, but twice again at 24. And so I had a myriad of other health conditions along the way that were a mystery to my Western medical professionals. So I really had to take this healing journey into my own hands. And that's where I got this mantra of the empowerment and the healing comes from within because it truly does. So that has been my journey through the inspiration that I've had in the last, the last years. That is amazing. At 15, when most young people are thinking about their clothing, their popularity, dances, football, basketball games. And you're dealing with Bell's palsy and having to really do some great spiritual, intellectual, and emotional search on yourself. Well, clearly it paid off for you. 
from the things that you're doing now. So when you look back at that time, do you see that as a dark period or do you see it as a point of where you really started to blossom, open up into the woman you are today? Yeah, absolutely. So I believe that every obstacle, every challenge that we go through in life serves as a lesson, a lesson that we can learn and grow and stretch ourselves and really get back onto our path of alignment. And for me, I thought that in order to be successful, in order to feel worthy, I would have to get into a nine to five job and climb the corporate ladder. I found out very quickly that that was not my calling because my health began to deteriorate even more. So for me, absolutely, it was a knowing that all of my health struggles were guiding me back towards that path of where I was supposed to be. And it has led me to where I am today. So if I just had an easy breezy life and adolescence, then I would not be able to show up today with all of the wisdom and insight and knowledge that I have in my healing journey. And I wouldn't be able to share that with my clients. And uh, like everyone, you know, I've gone through not just physical turmoil and um, saw and the manifestation of chronic stress and disease within my body, what that did, but uh, mental and emotional turmoil and traumas. And so because of that, I really learned that it's not just about healing the physical body and taking all the supplements and working out and eating all the right foods, but really focusing on our mental, emotional, and spiritual bodies and how we can release and heal our past and heal our traumas. And that is what helps us to manifest a body that feels whole, healthy, and empowered. Okay. So Bamboo Lab, I just want to share this with you. I'd like you to stop right now, or when you get to your, if you're walking, running, driving, when you get to a place where you can get in your phone or computer, please get on and, and, and please Google Sam Calaward, K-A-L-A-W-A-R-T, and look up the healing space, her website, her her organization. And I would recommend subscribe to her monthly notes of wisdom and her event, event updates. This stuff is gold right here. I, I firmly believe that. And over the past, I would say year and a half, I've never really took seriously this concept of mind-body correlation until the last 18 months when we've gone more to a gluten-free diet and, and cut out dairy and and I've seen such a transformation in just that in and of itself but she's going so much deeper into the spiritual aspect of this and I think you're going to all of you are going to be extremely uh, blessed to be able to follow Sam and reach out to her when needed and maybe join some of her events and her classes you said something Sam I, I tried to write it down but I was writing so many things you said empowerment and power come from within. Did I miss any part of that? Is that what you said? Yes. Yep. That's what I said. I think I just found the title for today's podcast. Well, great. So now I I would imagine the past three years across the world with the COVID uh, and the the quarantining and 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 the social distancing and that you, like all of us have, you know, realize some new difficulties that we never expected in our country and in our, in our world. What have been your biggest learnings you know, pertaining to your expertise and your specialty in your industry, what have been the biggest learning or learnings you've had over the past three years? I would say coming back to that piece of letting go and surrendering. So it is our choice, whether we hold on to fears, worries, anxieties, which only create inner turmoil. And so over and over and over again, I have had intention and commitment and consistency with my practice and letting go and letting go of all of that heavy emotional baggage. And then coming back to the presence of my body, feeling the safety of my body, the groundedness of my body, because if you don't feel safe, then you are disassociating from yourself, from your environment, from your family. And so that safety piece is so key. And through coming back to that piece of presence, Using the breath has been a really important tool for me because it's one of the fastest ways to bypass the analytical and logical mind and come back into this sense of safety within and connection within. And so that whole theme of letting go and surrendering the scattered mind has been a really important theme over the past couple of years. And then also realizing once again that I'm not going to allow external fear especially coming from the media to dictate how I feel 
internally on a daily basis. And that in itself is very empowering too. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Get the latest insights from top mortgage pros on Mortgage Connects, a podcast by MGIC. We interview thought leaders from across the industry to share their wide-ranging expertise and candid views on critical market developments and current housing trends. Our guests reveal highly effective marketing and referral strategies, training tips and best practices, and what you can expect from the mortgage market in the future. Hear from experts like best-selling author Todd Duncan, U.S. Bank's Lenny McNeil, and Freddie Mac's Danny Gardner. Listen to Mortgage Connects on your favorite app or at MortgageConnects.com today. Okay, I'm going to stop you just for a moment, Sam, and try to encapsulate what you said so that the audience can really gather this. Before I do, I want to read a testimonial. I went through Sam's testimonials on our website today, and there's several of them, and they're all very consistent. This comes from Kelsey, and she says, I have been taking several of your breathwork sessions, and they have been life-changing. I've experienced so much healing and feel that I've been able to find clarity with past traumas and that I'm not sure I would ever have, I ever would have before. Thank you for everything you do. So audience, please find Sam. But what I got out of this so far, and there's a, several things on my page, my notes, are, my page is already filled. So I got to get another piece of paper here. Empowerment and power comes from within. And she talked about one of the books that inspired her at a young age when she was a teenager was the book by Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, which I would recommend to anybody in the audience to pick up. It's a classic. It's, it's a biblical book for the industry of self-development improvement. And she talked in there about how she learned at that time she could co-create uh, her prosperity and healing and really transform her own life, mind, body, and spirit. And having Bell's palsy at 15, then again at 24, and contracting Lyme disease, it was rock bottom for her, especially as a freshman in high or a freshman in high school. And that she found this 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 transformational process to be not only healing, but to really be transforming to her, to turn her into the woman she is today, and is helping all these hundreds and hundreds of other people, if not more. And I really like what she said, obstacles and challenges serve as a lesson to help us get back in alignment. In the Bamboo Lab, you all probably all remember the concept we talked back in the day about when we face these brick walls in life by the the Carnegie Mellon uh, University uh, uh, professor, Brandy Posh, who passed away when he did his lecture, his last lecture talking about the brick walls and how they are there not for us to back away, but for us to prove to the world how badly we want something. These obstacles aren't there to turn us back. They're there to say, let's prove it and smash through, let's scale these brick walls. And that's exactly what Sam is teaching. Um, another thing I really like what you said, Sam, was uh, what you've learned over the past three years was letting go and surrendering. It's our choice of whether or not and how we hold on to these fears and anxieties. And it's really safety is a key. And when we do some of this breath work, we find safety within ourselves. So I'm going to ask you now, Sam, can you share with, uh, with us in the audience a little bit what this empowered breath work entails? Yeah, absolutely. So conscious circular connected breath work is a form of somatic therapy that allows you to release the mind and go into a very deep meditative state. So for many people, they want to meditate. They have a desire or interest in meditating and practicing breath work, but they don't know where to start. And they find that they cannot quiet their mind when they do try to meditate. So for many people that are completely new to the world of meditation, to breath work, they find that with conscious circular connected breath work healing within 10, 15 minutes, they're able to drop in to a very transcendental surrendered state of complete presence. And it's within this state that we begin to access the limbic brain, the subconscious mind, which is the feeling aspect of the brain. And this is where we hold on to emotional traumas and old wounds that are holding us back knowingly or unknowingly within our lives. And so through this process and in each breathwork journey, you are guided through a 40 to 60 minute breathwork journey where you are continuing this cycle of breath in and out of the body. And this leads to a profound cathartic release, both emotionally, physically, spiritually, as you begin to let go of any of those heavy emotional wounds or traumas that begin to come through within the journey. So you're laying down, you may have an eye mask on, you may have a blanket over you. And then I have music playing either if you're joining via Zoom 
It's music that you hear through your own speakers. If you're in person with me in Grand Rapids, it is um, very powerful speakers that we have there because the music is a huge aspect of this. And then I call it a journey because you are truly journeying within within yourself, within your psyche, within your emotional body, within your spiritual body. And you're beginning this process of reconnecting to all of those lost or unseen aspects of self. And you're beginning that process of release and surrender. And it happens in a really natural, organic way through this breath work. And it's a very powerful way to experience a deeper release, but also to regulate your nervous system and to help quiet the mind and to help reconnect to your intuition. And so there's so many benefits of breathwork healing and you experience something new each time that you lay down and do this work, but you are guided through cues. Um, I'm there to guide you. I'm coming around. If you're in person with me, I may be helping you through any obstacles or blockages that you're facing. But for the most part, you're going through this journey by yourself. And though that there may be breathers around you, you find that this is a very individual journey and you're able to drop into this deepened meditative state really quickly. And because the music's really loud, you just get lost within yourself and within that sense of it's okay to let go. It's okay to release. Many breathers experience a huge heart opening. Um, so there's just an array of different uh, physical, spiritual, mental, and emotional effects that take place within a breathwork journey. It's very hard to describe because this is very experiential work. But once you lay down and you breathe in a full breathwork journey, this you will find is nothing like what you have experienced in mindfulness or meditation or yoga. It's a very, very different experience. Many people will describe it to a similar experience of plant medicine. Um, so that is the kind of overview I like to give on breath work, though, like I said, it is hard to fully comprehend until you lay down and try the work yourself. Well, I think if my audience is very similar to me, meditation itself, the standard meditation we've learned is very challenging. I know for me, when I did a podcast last Friday with one of my heroes, Gay Hendricks, I found myself a little tense before. So I did a 12 minute standard meditation. It did help uh, just to calm myself to some degree, but this empowered breath work sounds like just next generation, next level style. So if many of my audience, audience out there wants to really release the mind, quiet the mind and access that limbic brain, what's the best way for them to get a hold of you and reach out to you and to learn more about you, Sam? I would say through the podcast, through my Instagram um, page, which I typically update daily, and then my website. I also on the Heal podcast have many versions of conscious breath work um, and different mindfulness practices uh, from season one. But like I mentioned, in order to get a full experience, I recommend journeying through a full session of 40 to 60 minutes with me. And I will be opening a virtual platform at the end of this month um, because I do guide virtual sessions twice a month right now, once a month sometimes, but I will have a more comprehensive platform with both the live and then a uh, past and future replays for you to experience this anytime that you need deeper support and deeper healing. And Sam, I'm going to I'm going to share your link to your pot to your website on the text version of our, our podcast podcast today. But can you share with them the us the Instagram name you go by? Yes, it is just my name. So at Sam Calawart. Perfect. Simple enough. Wonderful. Well, I have another question that I ask every guest, Sam, and I think I have it, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Over the course of your life, as you've journeyed into these new levels of, of experience, uh, spiritually, emotionally, you know, intellectually, physically, what has been the most difficult thing you've ever gone through? Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, this is Doug Downs, host of the podcast Stories and Strategies for Public Relations. If you work in PR, communication strategy, marketing, stakeholder engagement, we cover them all in Stories and Strategies. This podcast is different from other PR podcasts because it's not a sermon. We interview experts from around the world, psychologists and cognitive neuroscientists, researchers looking at how artificial intelligence will impact communication ethics, senior leaders in business and corporate communications. Check it out, Stories and Strategies for Public Relations on any podcast directory.
That is a hard question for sure. So I would say um, a two-parter physically going through Lyme disease and not knowing why my body was deteriorating, not knowing why I was in so much physical pain, not knowing why I was experiencing paralysis, just that feeling of no one can help me in this situation. And I was feeling really defeated at times. But like I had mentioned, that is what brought me into this space of healing um, the mental, emotional, physical body. And so that was absolutely the most difficult, one of the most difficult moments in my life because it ebbed and flow. I would think, oh, I'm getting better. I'm feeling so great. And then I would hit another rock bottom. Um, So going through that journey and most people know healing is not linear. It is up and down. This journey is lifelong and continuous but I'm here for it. Um, and I'm all in now. And now when I feel myself backsliding in my health in any way, I always pause and I am very intentional that I do not allow myself to fall back into a victim mindset, which is very common with people who have autoimmune disease or different chronic health conditions to fall into that space. I think it's so important that we do not go there. Um, and so that has been a huge lesson within my journey, but on a spiritual level, one of the hardest moments of my life was in 2021 when I flew down to uh, Mexico and partook in a two-part plant medicine ceremony. I think that plant medicine is spoken a lot, a lot right now, um, and it's a very hot topic and a huge trending modality of the alternative healing world. But what people don't realize is that there is also a very dark side to plant medicine. And it's something that I experienced in my second ceremony. And because of that, I will not be partaking in any more full length plant medicine ceremonies. Um, And I found almost instantly from that, as I came back from that absolute hell that I was in from the ayahuasca ceremony that my intuition spoke to me and said, you can experience this healing with the breath completely sober. You don't need an external source to get there. And it's something that I'm thankful that I went through, but also a warning that I want to give to other people before they just jump into plant medicine. Because again, I think it's just a growing trend right now that a lot of people are hopping on without really having deep reverence and understanding for the work. And I have heard um, some, some of my friends and, and some individuals on the friends of my life who have discussed experimenting with that and trying those, those. So this will be a great episode for them to listen to. Wow. What a yeah. lesson. Yeah, it was. I, you know, it can open you up um, spiritually. I'm very sensitive. For me, for example, if I go to a meditation or yoga class, I literally can have visions and feel as though I'm in like another dimension. So spiritually, I am very, very sensitive. And I knew this. So going in to the ayahuasca ceremony, I thought that I would have a deeper experience of just finding deeper truth and light and all of these things. But instead I experienced a really healthy dose of, like I mentioned, the dark side of plant medicine and the dark spiritual forces that come into play in those ceremony spaces. And it was really eye opening. And again, very thankful that I had that experience, but it's something I will not be returning to. So this, this spiritual sensitivity you have and this ability to, to, have visions and things like that and go into almost a trance-like state. Is that something you've had primarily through your life or is that something you've trained and taught yourself a a place to go? Uh, Both. So like I mentioned, spiritually, I grew up in a Christian household. I still am Christian. And because of that and having the Holy Spirit within me, I have always had just a very sensitive spiritual awareness, to what's happening around me. And then being able to drop into meditation and breath work really, really easily. Um, so I absolutely was gifted with that, but also through the years of practicing this empowered breathwork healing, it has drastically increased my intuitive abilities and the connection I have to my spiritual body. Well, I think from what I can see as I'm sitting here listening to you speak, I'm thinking uh, you know, consciously how well-spoken you are. You seem very grounded, very 
just just connected with yourself. And I'm assuming a lot of that has come through, through your empowered breath work therapy and your healing. And I think for the audience out there, so many of us are going through so much trauma. We're going through some slight, some past coming up to haunt us, some current, some large, all different types of brick walls we are facing. And for a lot of us, we try many of the standard things. Quite frankly, most of the people I speak with don't try anything. They play that victim mentality and they stay kind of curl, curled up in, in the corner and wait for somebody else to come and transform them. As, as, as Sam has shared, empowerment and power comes from within. And I think a lot of us, when those who do try, try things like, me, like medication, perhaps, exercise, diet, proper diet, reading, journaling, therapy, all those things can be very good. But some people may not be able to crack that code to that next level to really dig deep, deep and find their, their authentic their authentic self and find the alignment they're seeking. I think this is a great place to go and start right here with Sam. So Sam, for you, with all these things you're doing, what's a win for you? What's a victory for Sam in her life? Right now, I would say getting back into a deepened spiritual practice, uh, being a mom, running my career but also making time for me. I have been practicing habit stacking lately. So Mm. essentially it is a practice in where you are combining or multitasking several different modalities all in one. So for an example, um, and I've heard this from so many of my clients, I just don't have time to meditate in my day. So a huge success right now in my life that I am thankful for is this um, idea of and practice of habit stacking. So when I take my son for a walk every morning, I have a beautiful path through the country that we go. And as I'm taking him for a walk, I put in my earbuds and I practice a walking meditation and a walking breathwork practice. So I'm walking my son, I'm getting fresh air and I'm meditating and I'm practicing breathwork. I'm grounding for my day, which I believe having a morning practice is so essential for feeling grounded and present through the rest of your day. And that has been a huge win in my life. I love the concept of the morning practice. I coach that to my clients so often saying, start your day doing something that might challenge you. That's something that you can start the day with some structure that gets you, you know, that's the fulcrum of the rest of your 24 hours that before you wake up again. So you said having morning practice, is that, is that the title you use? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Practicing habit stacking. If you need to, if you're um, a busy entrepreneur or, you know, you have to get off to work or you're uh, a parent, you can practice those modalities still. You can make time for it because really you can do anything within your day that you prioritize. So if you're prioritizing cleaning your home, then that is your priority. But if you're prioritizing your mental and emotional health, you'll make time to sit down and meditate or go for a walking meditation or to ground in nature in some way, that's what you'll make time for. So really um, evaluating what you're making a priority in your life on a daily basis, because it is those daily habits that over time lead to the biggest transformation within our lives. So we have to evaluate our daily habits. Okay. So, so audience, this is a great question, I think, for us to really give ourselves an internal audit. What are you making a priority in your life and how are you, however you utilize the the time in your day, especially your mornings, is going to indicate what your priorities truly are. If we're getting up and turning the the news on right away with a cup of coffee and and an unhealthy breakfast, that's a priority to you. So when you look at the first, I'm just going to go ahead and say the first hour of your day, that probably tells, will tell you what your priorities are for the rest of the day. So what can you do to make some slight adjustments? in the beginning mornings, the early dawns of your day to reset your priority, to truly reflect your authentic self. And as we call it here in the Bamboo Lab, your true peak identity. So that's a great question to ponder over the next few days. And we're we're, we're gonna come back and visit that in future episodes. So I have a question for you. And where's your book? Do you have a book written? I don't, but I get asked that all the time. And it is on my uh, to-do list is to write a book. And I'm hoping in the next year to get started on that. I get asked the same question, Sam, and I and, <laughs> I, and I and I and I've been asked it for 15 years, and finally this year, I had a goal to finish my book. The book I wanted to finish will not be finished, so I decided to publish one that I had written three years ago, 
and get that one out just as a start to say I did something. So mm-hmm. I feel it's it's one of those things that it, we have it in our brains, we have it in our experience, in our minds, and our souls, but sometimes it's really hard to get on paper. It is for me anyway. And yeah. this, you know, I have to share with you, and I'm going to share with the audience too, because I think so many of us, of us would agree with this. Meditation scares me. And I don't know why. And I know you're talking about something deeper than meditation, but just even basic meditation, slowing my brain down, it scares me. I have only, I started doing a minute a day, then three minutes, then I got up to seven and then I capped out there. I finally did 12 minutes last Friday before my podcast interview with Gay Hendricks, Dr. Gay Hendricks. And that's the most I've ever done. So what would you say to a person like myself and probably many of the, the Bamboo Pack listeners who might be afraid of kind of shutting their minds down and closing it down and, and releasing it, uh, quieting it, ex- accessing that limbic brain? What would you say would be a good start for us? Absolutely. I would say engaging in a breath practice, a grounding practice of breathing in through the nose and then extending your exhale through an open, relaxed jaw with your hands on your heart or on the top of your thighs is a really powerful way to just begin that practice of presence, grounding, and quieting the mind. A lot of times when we have fear of meditating, of uh, letting go, it is because the ego is so strong, so used to being in control and Um, Oftentimes it is a trauma response from our childhood. So also realizing that our inner child holds on to all of the wounding and imprints and messaging that we received growing up about what it means to be successful, what it means to be worthy, what it means to be good enough. And so oftentimes it's also, we just have to nurture that inner child piece of us that may have some residual fear arising to trying something new and say, it's okay. It's okay to let go. I am here. You are safe. So speaking to yourself and to those aspects of self that feel scared um, and don't want to try something new can also be a powerful practice, just speaking internally into your own heart uh, and that presence through grounding, using the breath, using an extended exhale and placing hands over the body, just a couple minutes a day, that in itself can be a huge um, step in the right direction. I love that. So I'm going to, I'm going to recap what I got here. So in, uh, inhale through the nose, exhale, they have an extended exhale through the mouth with the jaw relaxed with maybe your hand on your heart. Is that, would that summarize mm-hmm. to some degree? Yes. Is there any time frame, Sam, that you recommend a person start with? Is it three minutes, seven minutes, 12 minutes, 20 minutes? Is there any where you'd say, try it when you first try it, do it for this length of time and then maybe increase it over the course of time? I say three minutes because three minutes is the average length of a song. And we listen to so many songs on the radio while we're driving around. And so if we can just use three minutes to sit down, set in a timer. And for me, I also recommend a guided practice. So that's why I have so many guided practices, guided mini practices on my podcast, which you can listen to on Apple, iTunes, or Spotify, because for many people shutting off the mind completely, is just not possible. It's just it really is not. So listening to someone else's voice or listening to calming music or listening to binaural beats, that can be really helpful within your um, practice to have that guidance through the process and through the practice so that you don't feel alone. Wonderful. So again, Bamboo Lab audience, I'm going to share with you to look for Sam, go to the Heal podcast. I listened to it this morning. Kelly and I did. I found it incredibly good. It's the first episode I've listened to. I'm now going to be subscribing. I have subscribed to her as of this morning, her monthly notes of wisdom and event updates and find her on Instagram. It's at Sam Calloway. Pretty simple. And I'm going to read from Rebecca here, what she says on, on one of her testimonials for Sam. I discovered Sam on Instagram and grew curious about breath work based on her extensive work on the practice around the world. I didn't know what to expect from my first 11 session, my first one-on-one session, but I worked, I walked away so glad that that I tried it. I have participated in many forms of alternative healing and therapies and found this to be the most beneficial of anything I have ever experienced. If you're looking for that type of experience, I would reach out to Sam. And I I feel like I'm really, I'm not getting paid by Sam or anything of that nature, but just, you know, listening to her podcast today following her on social media the past few years, now speaking with her for the first time over the past 45 minutes, I I can honestly say I'm going to be uh, doing some research and jumping in some of these sessions that she has for sure, because I know I need it. 
And I know from the, the feedback and the hundreds and hundreds of part letters I've received from you listeners, so many of you need this as well. So this is a great place to begin the process right here. So Sam, then all these things you're doing, and now you're a mother to Eastwood and Eastwood Ford even, I love that even better. What's next for you? Next, I'm just really focusing on my virtual platform, as I mentioned, Rising in Breath, which will be a monthly membership. I'll be launching that towards the end of this month. And then in January, I will be hosting a really empowering breathwork and meditation retreat in Costa Rica, which uh, just sold out this week. So I'm really excited for that as well. Oh, wow. Well, best of success on that. That's that's wonderful. Too bad no one of the audience can jump on board now, but I'm assuming there'll be more retreats coming from you. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Great. Well, Sam, before we wrap up here, and I know you're, I know you're busy, I want to keep to your schedule. Is there any question that I didn't ask that I should have, or is there anything, last message you'd like to leave with the Bamboo Pack, the Bamboo Lab audience? I'd like to just give a book recommendation for those that want to explore this work on a deeper level, and that is Becoming Supernatural by Dr. Joe Dispenza, or check out Dr. Joe Dispenza's uh, YouTube channel. So if you or anyone that you know feel just disconnected from yourself, feel at loss in your healing journey, that is also a really powerful resource to begin to understand how you can use the mind, the breath your emotional energetic body to co-create your healing and to really empower your life. Wonderful. So becoming supernatural by Dr. Joe Dispenza. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I have it pulled up on my Amazon cart right now. That's going to go right into my cart. Sam, thank you. Thank you for being an amazing guest. I mean, I've got a page and a half of notes here that I, I think I've learned a great deal. I have learned a great deal more than I thought I was going to learn. I had many more questions to ask you that maybe we can have you back on again, because I'm certain we're going to get a lot of heart letters from, from the audience and listeners regarding this episode to learn more. So again, audience, please out there, check out Sam, check out the Heal podcast. I think you said Apple, iTunes, Spotify are kind of the bigger platforms you're on. Sam? Yes. Wonderful. Look her up on Instagram at Sam Calawart Instagram and get on her website. You know, just Google her name, her organization, her, her her business, for lack of a better word, is the healing space. But you can just Google her. It'll come up and subscribe to her, her monthly notes of wisdom. I'm glad I did. And I'm looking forward to getting, learning more about this process of empowered breath work and really kind of getting access, access to my limbic brain and talking to that little inner boy in there that's been screaming for 55 years. Sam, thank you so much. I really appreciate the time you spent with myself and the Bamboo Lab. Thank you for being such an amazing guest on the Bamboo Lab podcast. Yes, thank you for having me, Brian. It's a pleasure. We're going to have you back, I hope. Yes. Everyone out there, Bamboo Lab, thank you again for listening. We're going to be, this will be, will be broadcast here the next couple of days. And in the meantime, please get out there and sculpt your life. Get out there. And strive every day to be the best version of yourself. Show love and respect to others. And by all means, live consciously. I love you all.